Bowtie Fragrance Guy. What's up, YouTube? How do you guys like the intro? How'd you guys like the intro, baby? Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo. Nah, I'm kidding, man. I featured the intro on a video on Friday. Uh, if you guys haven't checked that video out, which I think was a, you know, was a nice video as well. Uh, some very, uh, you know, interesting, very interesting subject matter on that, that video. Go check out the video from Friday as well. Uh, but I just wanted to open the video up today with my new intro, man. Shout out to 171 uh, Productions, uh, which is uh, a local uh, production company ran by two African-American females. So I know it's Black History Month and the whole nine. We come to the close of it, we wanted to shout them out. They have uh, do some awesome work. And I've worked with them a lot with the uh, film productions and things of that nature that I've done. So shout out to them for uh, helping me carry my vision out for the new intro. So uh, thank you very much, ladies, for uh, the finished product. I love my new intro. All right, guys, so what we're going to be talking about today, and I'm going to have to move through these quickly because I am doing a top 15. My top 15 designer fragrances that I'm going to be wearing, I plan on wearing, this upcoming spring. Now, I know that people usually do a top 10, but that's why I'm doing a top 15. <laughs> I want to do something a little bit different. And in addition to that, at this point in time, my collection has gotten so uh, large that it's harder to narrow it down to 10. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice when you, the, the more you accumulate fragrances, of course, uh, you kind of forget about some, they kind of fall by the wayside. So there are some fragrances on here that I really want to give some more wearings to, and I feel like they are great for the springtime. So you know how we do, guys. I'm going to play the intro again, just because I'm going to put it in its proper place, but I wanted to start this video off with the intro, you know, so that, you know, you guys that don't watch the whole video get a chance to see it. <laughs> You all know what I'm saying. So if you want to see what's on my list, my top 15 spring designer fragrances for the year of 2022. You know the routine. Keep it locked right here. Fragrance guy. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in, man. Let's go ahead and jump into this list. Because I have 15, I'm going to try to move, move a little bit quicker. Uh, so I won't be spending as much time on each fragrance as I might do with the top 10. Uh, let's have a sip of coffee real quick. I have to have my, my juice to get me going in the morning, man. So first up in the 15, the number 15, a spot on my spring designer list this year is from the house of Narciso Rodriguez, and this is called For Him. This is called For Him. Listen, you're going to see uh, fragrances that work really well, in my opinion, in the springtime. Greens. Greens work really well in the uh, springtime. Uh, this is a uh, fougere fragrance. Uh, the main notes here, the two main notes I would say are violet leaf and musk. Now, Violet leaf and violet to make a distinction here violet leaf is going to be more green and violet is more powdery So violet is more uh, Like when you get the a similar vibe to like an iris So that that powderiness that you usually find in fragrances comes from violet But violet leaf which is in here is more of a green kind of earthy note And that's what's really the most prominent note in this fragrance and like I said green fragrances really work well in the spring That's what you think about flowers blooming so florals work as well. So you think about flowers blooming, you think about grass turning green, hence green fragrances really set in the proper mood for the springtime. And this is a great fougere fragrance produced in the year of 2007. Some people used to say uh, that this smells like wet cement. Um, I don't know, man. I, I don't think I've ever really, <laughs> really smelled wet cement before, but a lot of people used to say it about this fragrance. But anyway, it is great for the springtime, a great fougere fragrance that features the note prominently of Violet Leaf. So check this one out, man. Again, this from the house of Narciso Rodriguez. This is called For Him. All right, guys, so the next fragrance on the list, this one comes in at the 14th spot. This is from the house of Hermes, and this is H24. H24, admittedly, I wasn't the hugest fan of this fragrance when it first came out, but I think that it is really great for the springtime. 
this one is very it has this metallic thing and they talk about that in the breakdown of the notes it is very metallic in the opening and i think that's something that is really polarizing either people love it or they kind of hate it and i was some way kind of on more on the hate side initially but once i got the fragrance in the collection and i really started to spend some time with it it became a really really pleasant scent and it is perfect for the springtime green notes in here florals you have some narcissus you have some clary sage in this as well so again this is like one of the perfect kind of scents to wear in the springtime so check this one out from the house of hermes again this one is called h24 all right guys so the next fragrance coming in at the 13th spot on the list this year this one comes from the house of valentino and this is valentino uomo aqua valentino uomo aqua i think this one is discontinued but as of right now you can still find it out there on the market for not a bad price so if this is one that you had on your radar, you probably need to go ahead and get that now before prices skyrocket because you know how it goes in the fragrance community, man. When something is discontinued, people try to charge your arm and a leg for it. So save your arm, save your leg. If you want this, then go ahead and get it now. But this one is one that I want to get more wear out of because I've had it for a few months now and I haven't worn it as much, but I do really enjoy this one. Honestly, it's just a lighter version of the Valentino uh, Uomo line. This has a very unique note of tomato and to me tomato is more of a it gives more of a almost it's fruity but it is more in like a sweet fruity vibe that you're going to get from tomato It's more green and again that is the theme of the list oftentimes when you hear people talk about fragrances that are great for the springtime green you think green and this is more of a green kind of fruity accord that's uh, created with that tomato accord in this very unique but it's combined with a very succulent fruity mandarin orange in the opening so it works really well together you get the signature iris so you get that power powderiness on the dry down this is a great one to wear for the spring so check it out from the house of valentino this is valentino uomo aqua all right so coming in at the 12th spot this year this one comes from the house of giorgio armani and this is aqua digio profondo aqua digio profondo and this to me is a more you're going to see, hear me say the word green about a hundred times on this video. So take a shot every time you hear me say the word green. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't do that because I'm not going to be responsible for that. So Aqua Digio Profondo, it is a more green take on the original, otherwise super aquatic and fresh DNA of the original Aqua Digio. Now, what does that come from? Well, there is a green mandarin uh, in the opening of this, and there's also cypress in the heart. You get some cypress in the heart of this as well. So again, it's a lot more, uh, not so much aquatic, but more green. And that makes to me for a very good, of course, as we already know, spring fragrance. So check this one out from the house of Giorgio Armani. This is called Aqua Digio Profondo. All right, coming in at the 11th spot, this fragrance comes from a house, well, yeah, from a house that I really enjoy their clothing. And that's from the house of Brioni. And this is something called Brioni. This is called Brioni, and I think this fragrance was released late last year, sometime in 2021, but this is a great scent. The main note in this to my nose is violet, so you get more of that powderiness from violet. I think this has green mandarin in it as well, green apple, I'm sorry. Very crisp, clean, green apple in the opening. I really, really enjoy the opening of this scent. The green apple, the violet in this, it's kind of ozonic, so it's this kind of airiness that uh, that you get from this when it opens up. But again, this is a great one that is I'm going to be getting a lot of wear out of. I think this is like the perfect office scent uh, for you to wear in the springtime. So that's why it's on the list at the 11th spot from the house of Brioni. This is called Brioni. All right, guys, coming in at the 10th spot, this fragrance comes from the house of Dolce & Gabbana, and this is called The One Luminous Nights. The One Luminous Nights. And guys, I love this bottle. The bottle is absolutely gorgeous, but the fragrance is just as good dates geranium sage and i think there may be some basil in this as well so again just a fragrance that's going to really do well in the, the the springtime now i think this one is versatile enough where you can really kind of rock this one year round i would just kind of go a little bit you know easy on the trigger in the the summertime but other than that I, this is a very versatile dna but again it has those notes in there that really work for uh, a nice spring day or evening time event now the highlight with this one again is the date so that gives this very uh almost nutty vibe to this fragrance that makes it very unique from anything else that i'm going to have on this list today so 
I don't know if this is uh, has not become available, readily available over here in the US. I know at one point it wasn't, uh, but if you can get your hands on this, I, I really think you would enjoy this DNA. Very, very unique fragrance. There's really nothing else to me that really smells like this that I've ever smelled. So check it out I mean, if you get a chance from the house of Dolce & Gabbana. Dolce & Gabbana, the one, Luminous Nights. All right, guys, now coming in at the ninth spot on this list, I think this one actually made the list last year, but it deserves it to make it again. Uh, one of the best notes to my uh, my liking in the springtime is going to be the note of vetiver and it's all in the name of this one right here from the house of Hermes. Terra de Hermes, O Intense Vetiver. O Intense Vetiver. This one features of course the note of vetiver. Uh, there's also geranium uh, in this fragrance as well. And again, if you can imagine the original Terra de Hermes, which all was, was of course a, a orange, earthy orange fragrance, a dirty orange, that's the way a lot of people like to categorize. Uh, that scent. This one is a little bit more earthy with a with an amped up vetiver note. I think vetiver was also in that one as well, but it's is amped up in this scent. So that's what you're really going to get uh, with this. I think there's some grapefruit in the opening, so it's less of an orange kind of feel that you got with the original and more of a grapefruit opening uh, with this one right here with the amped up vetiver note. But it's absolutely fantastic for the spring. So check it out from the House of Hermes. This is Terra de Hermes. Or intense vetiver. All right, now coming in at the A spot, this one actually comes from the house of Paco Rabanne, and this is Invictus Legend. Invictus Legend, man, listen, Invictus fragrances just smell good. I know that a lot of people like to throw around the word synthetic and all this other stuff about Invictus fragrances, but at the end of the day, most of the ones I've, that I've smelled just smell great. And this one is no exception. It's aquatic in the opening, but in the heart of this, I think, is where it really comes together for me and makes a great fragrance that I feel like is great for the springtime as well. I mean, you can get away with wearing this in the summer, of course, but this thing just smells good. I, I, I mean, again, just like I said, most Invictus fragrances to me just smell great. So you get this very aquatic opening, but then you get some bay leaf uh, as it starts to dry down. So you get, it starts to get these, these kind of, you know, cool spices in the heart of this fragrance. And again, those that's where the magic happens for me as it relates to this being a great fragrance to wear in the springtime. But again, easy to wear, highly complimented kind of scent. So check it out from the house of Papa Raban. Again, this is called Invictus Legend. All right, guys, now coming in at the seventh spot, this fragrance actually was released last year uh, from the house of Dolce & Gabbana. This is Light Blue Forever. Light Blue Forever, a lot of people like to put this on their uh, summer list. And of course it could go for the summer, but to me, this is perfect for the springtime, man. Perfect for the springtime. It has a very, to my nose, very photorealistic kind of grapefruit opening. And this was really, seemed to me, be hit or miss for some people. Some people really love that grapefruit opening. Some people didn't like it. I love it. You get the grapefruit, you get this very, very salty, aquatic, uh, these very salty and aquatic nuances in the opening as well. And that kind of lives throughout the heart of this fragrance. But the star players in this, again, that make it a great, spring fragrance you got some violet leaf in here so you got that really earthy greenness and i get that in this fragrance as well as some vetiver so you got violet leaf as well as vetiver two of the main notes that you're going to see in a lot of fragrances that are great for the spring so guys if you haven't checked it out yet and you love grapefruit i think this is one that you're going to love from the house of dolce and gabbana this is called light blue forever all right guys so the next fragrance on the list today and this is coming in at the sixth spot is from the house of Givenchy or Givenchy and this is called Trouble Fête. Trouble Fête, I talked about this fragrance last year I think it came out in 2020 there was this exclusive kind of exclusive line that Givenchy did uh, in 2020 it didn't get a lot of talk I don't know why but they had some amazing scents in that collection and this is one of the best it has fig as well as fig leaf now Fig is a note to me that gives this fruity creaminess to fragrances and I, I've started to really pay more attention to the note of fig over the past few months and I've really found that it is a note that I love because I love creamy fragrances. So it allows a fragrance to be creamy without of course that woodiness that a lot of times come from sandalwood that makes fragrances really, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that makes fragrances really creamy. So fig, fig leaf. Uh, and you also have, uh, as this one starts to dry down, a uh, sesame accord. Now, the one, now another fragrance that introduced me to the set, the note of sesame or the accord of sesame was 
uh, a fragrance done by Monica Cho uh, with Novitis. It was called uh, The Embrace. Sesame gives a very, this unique nutty creaminess to fragrances as well. So you got the creaminess from fig, you have that greenness from the fig leaf, and then you have the sesame accord that gives it to this more nutty creaminess. This stuff, guys, I'm telling you, get your nose on True Blay Fet from the house of Givenchy and you will not be disappointed. That's why it's on this list at the sixth spot. Make sure you check it out. All right, guys, so coming in at the fifth spot on this list, this one comes from the house of Yi Saint Laurent, and this is Y Le Parfum. Y Le Parfum, I don't care what iteration of Y that you put on this list. Honestly, I, any of them could work. Uh, any of the iterations of the Y line could work, but I chose this one because this is the latest to be released in the line or lineage of Y. You still have that, that nice, uh, fruity, crisp, clean apple you know, with the aldehydes in the opening of this. And that's what I love about this. And the opening is so captivating. But of course, as the fragrance starts to dry down, you have some sage in this as well. It starts to get, you know, more, a little bit more of that spiciness that I like in fragrances without being overly spicy for a scent that's good to wear for the springtime. Again, this is a highly complimented scent. Y'all know this thing. Check it out from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. Again, this is called Y Le Parfum. All right, guys, now coming in at the fifth spot on this list, this fragrance was released this year, actually, from the house of Mont Blanc. This is called Legend Red. Legend Red, and simply put, man, this thing just smells good. I ain't gonna, t I'm just being honest with you. Uh, I know there's gonna be a lot of people that try to bash this fragrance because it's not creative, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, this thing smells amazing man you're gonna get a lot of compliments on this one it's easy to wear man just like again most of the fragrances from uh the mont blanc legend line all of them smell good i mean every single last one of them smell good um is it gonna quench your desire for a, an upscale creative fragrance no but it's going to smell good and get you some compliments and that's really what this thing is about at the end of the day man smelling good and this thing smells fantastic you know it smells very similar to uh, the original, there's a little bit of the uh, uh, Mont Blanc Legend in this as well. I think they kind of just took those and kind of crumbled them up and put them in one bottle. And that's what you get with this. It's an amazing blood orange opening and grapefruit opening to this fragrance that I love. So check it out, man. This is good from the house of Mont Blanc. This is Mont Blanc Legend Red. All right, guys. So coming in at the third spot on this list, listen, if it had not been for performance, the performance on this fragrance, it dang well be, might be one of my favorite fragrances in my collection because it smells that good. Although it does suffer in the performance category, I still have to give it a nod because I just love the way this stuff smells. From the house of Cartier from the Rivieras collection, this is called Luxuriance. This is called Luxuriance. I have uh, two bottles of this. I have a backup bottle of this. Oh my gosh. Man, you remember guys, this gets the oh my gosh factor. See? <laughs> And I do it without thinking. When I smell it and the oh my gosh comes automatically, the OMG, this gets the OMG factor right here 100% when you put your nose to it. It smells amazing. There's no other way to say it. There's some herbal notes in here. There's some ferns. So again, that greenness, that really works well in the springtime. But there's some very, this is paired with some very unique notes in this. Some notes that I find and one of my other, another fragrance that I love, another designer fragrance, which is Tom Ford Noir Extreme. You have some uh, pistachio accord in here, as well as mastic. So it gives this, again, sweet, kind of nutty nuance to this fragrance, as well as fig. This thing is fantastic, but I'm gonna tell you the downside <laughs> of this right now. It, you only get about three to four hours out of this max. Take it with you, the bottle, this is a 3.4 ounce, but it is kind of small. Take it with you, reapply at about the three and a half hour mark, and you'll be good to go. It smells good enough, so it gets a pass from me on the performance. From the house of Cartier, the Rivieras collection, this is called Luxury. All right, guys, now coming in at the number two spot, I won't spend a lot of time on this because I've talked about this fragrance a lot uh, over the past couple months. From the house of YSL, again, this is called L'Homme Le Parfum. Long Le Parfum. So what do you get out of this? Well, to me it's really simple. If you take the original loan, uh, YSL loan, and you combine that with about 20% of Dylan Blue from Versace, that's exactly what this is. What does that equate to? A fragrance that smells freaking phenomenal, and that's gonna get you a lot of positive attention, or at least it does for me, so. 
Check it out, guys. This stuff is really good. I keep talking about it for a good reason from the house of YSL. This is called YSL Y. I'm sorry. This is called YSL Lay Parfum. All right, guys. Now, coming in at the number one spot for me on this list is comes from the house of Prada, and this is Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. Man, I've only had this thing for a few months. I've already put a nice dent in it. It's all the way down to here already because it just smells good. I mean, you can wear this thing any place, anytime. It smells great, man. It smells phenomenal, uh, just being honest with you. I, I really can't explain it to you. There's some Artemisia uh, in this, uh, in the opening. You have, of course, lavender, some iris uh, in this as well. There's some vetiver and this. This smells great. This smells great, man. Every fragrance from the Luna Rosa line to me smells really fantastic and this is no different. Uh, perfect fragrance, I'm telling you, to wear in the springtime. You could take this from the office out to a date night and I think it's going to get a positive response and work in all situations, in all scenarios. And because of the versatility of this one, that's why I gave it the nod. It smells good, the compliment factor is there, the performance is there, the lineage is there from the original fragrances from the Prada Luna Rosa line. This right here from Prada for designer fragrance was a home run. So it makes the number one spot on my designer spring list for the year of 2022 from the house of Prada. This is Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. All right, ladies and gents, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video today as I gave you my top 15 spring designer fragrances for the year of 2022. As always, I appreciate your time and your attention to these videos. You don't have to watch, but you do. And I sincerely appreciate that. Now don't forget, take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you share these videos out to some other folks that can use this information or find it entertaining. Cause I'm your guy, Darren, the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, of course. I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good, keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side.